Hi, this is Nathan Wilson. Welcome back to Independence Money. And today we have a guest host, Landry. Hi, I'm Landry Wilson. I will be giving a student perspective. Yes, and you are our intern over the summer, our college intern. And today we are going to continue our great debt debate. It seems to be the main conversation in the news these days with the talks of the debt ceiling and maybe defaulting on our debts. These are things we've addressed in previous videos. I think those problems are solvable, definitely in the short term. I think today's topic, we're gonna to be zeroing in on the student loans. I think we need some, some uh, education, including if you're not in college, especially if you are. I think our viewers can use some education on how big of a problem this really is. In personal experience, I don't know anyone who doesn't have student loans right now or even like gradually increasing their student debt. As a college student myself, um, that was the only solution they really gave you for getting your way through college was, oh yeah, debt, it's normal. That's not the way it should be. It should be they should offer you solutions or different sorts of paths to take. Debt should not be the only answer, but we're going to be talking about that today in great detail. Yeah, so we're going to have a couple parts here. We're going to have just kind of a macroeconomics, like why everybody should be concerned about this. And then we're going to have some tips and tricks, some things you can do, um, and some possible solutions. So let's kind of start with the problem. As of September 2022, 48 million U.S. borrowers collectively owed more than $1.7 trillion in student loans. This has surpassed auto loans and credit card debt. Only home mortgages at $12 million are larger. But, I mean, that's a problem. I mean, if you say student loans are at $17 trillion, home loans are at $12 trillion, generally speaking, houses have gone up in value. So you have the asset offsetting the liability. With student loans, the asset is income. And it's, it's oftentimes not enough in the way of wages to offset the amount of debt you're taking on. I mean, yeah, because I am only a sophomore in college and I'm wondering how I'm going to afford to even live after college. And that's two, three years from now. And we're already talking about like, I'm not going to be able to afford even an apartment. And that's just wild to me that we're already running into these issues. And that's a fear of mine as a sophomore in college. That should not be happening. Well, most people, with all due respect, don't tend to worry about financial matters. You're probably a little unique there, but that's a good thing. So a couple more statistics. I mean, the students taking on more debt 20, rose 25 percent between 2009 and 2021. Average student loan um, or average student goes out of college with around 29 grand. I feel like that's low. I think there's a lot of people I know that are, are a lot higher than that. Um, now, why would you do it? I mean, the, the age old idea is it offers higher paying jobs. I mean, this statistic says a worker with a bachelor's degree earns 1.8 times more than a person with a high school diploma does, but that boost in earnings has declined significantly um, as well. So I think another kind of thought pattern here is don't take it by default that you have to go to college. Actually look at what you want to do. I mean, you actually took some aptitude testing before you went into college, before you declared a major. Yeah, I remember you and I having this debate on whether I should go to college or not. And I ruled that I should because I felt like high school wasn't challenging enough for me. It didn't seem like it was fulfilling what I needed. So I went to college, but I came in knowing the basic ideas and the basic skills that I was good at, that I wanted to pursue. And that helped me significantly because I came in with some college credits as well as an idea of what I wanted my major to be. So I didn't waste money on classes that were useless to my major. Yeah, and I, and I think that, you know, I always say even when I'm talking to, you know, clients, begin with the end in mind. What is the intention here? It, and it shouldn't be just because I'm supposed to uh, or I'm just interested in this subject and then you end up changing majors and things like that. I think you got to go to a little bit more towards the finish line. What are some opportunities that you want to explore for work and then kind of dovetail your education into that? Um, and I think that goes with interns. You know, I, I've had a lot of interns through some of my businesses throughout the year. And I would say a lot of them intern and they learn that this kind of career is not what they want to do. And I'm totally pleased with that because I'd rather them do that now than graduate, go get a job, then find out 
they don't like it. So I think internships are interesting. But here's some of the warnings that I see. Higher interest rates is going to be more of a burden for folks graduating with student loans going into the future. It's going to consume a higher percentage of their, you know, their consumable income. Another article I read over the weekend is, I remember when I was growing up, the kind of the fear was robots were going to take over the manual labor jobs. Well, now there's an article out there about AI, artificial intelligence, is going to take over a lot of the white collar jobs. Meanwhile, if, if anybody owns a home out there here, they know this, there's a major shortage in craftspeople, whether you need welding or electric or plumbing or construction or concrete uh, or mechanical, there's a shortage of that. And those jobs, I think, are going to be higher in demand and may possibly uh, reduce the amount of debt that somebody you know, could uh, have in entering the workforce. I mean, yeah, it seems like the economy is almost going to like completely flip itself where blue collar jobs are going to be making a lot more than white collar jobs or even the availability in blue collar is going to double. Um, that wasn't the case 50 or so years ago. I mean, a college degree was high in demand, but now since everybody is getting one, it's almost like one in three students are getting one the value has decreased and the loans have increased. So there's really no balance here and we're trying to figure that out. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, even if you don't have any personal experience with, you know, either you having college debt or somebody you love having, you know, college debt or at that stage in their life, it affects us all as Americans because the economy runs on consumption. So when you have a student that's graduating with a high amount of debt service and a percentage of their paycheck is going towards servicing that debt, that is less they're spending in the economy. It also means that as the baby boomers age and they sell their homes to move into smaller quarters or assisted living or an apartment, they just don't want to deal with the maintenance. A lot of these students that are graduating with this debt entering the workforce are delaying buying a house. So that's going to affect the support on the real estate market. And on this channel, I've talked a lot about international real estate. And one of the reasons I like that is the demographics. They don't have the baby boomer population. They have a lot larger working class to support the aging population. And some of these kids that are graduating and entering the workforce with a lot of debt are delaying having children, which is further exasperating the problems we have on things like supporting social security payments through wages and, and things like that. So that's some concerns I have. The other big one that I think a lot of people your age don't know is there's no get out of jail card on student loans. There's no bankruptcy. I mean, in theory, if you proved undue hardship and it, you know, it, it was about to send you to the poverty line, you couldn't feed yourself, there's ways to discharge it. But generally speaking, it's one of the few items in the United States financial system that is not dischargeable by bankruptcy, the other being, you know, back taxes. So you're really putting a long-term anchor on your boat there if you do not go into this college experience with the end in mind. It's just really difficult because, like he said before, there is no get out of jail free card. And I know some people that have experienced that firsthand. Now the problem is to qualify for loans, you have to either apply by your income or your parents income, especially for FAFSA, and they aren't going to take your status, they're going to take your parents. So if your parents are making above a certain amount of salary and you're making nothing because you're a student, they're not going to give you anything. So again, there's no get out of jail free card because you're going to have to take out loans because your parents make more than you do. Well, logically, your parents are going to make more than you do. So there's really no solution for student loans, but there are a few ways you can limit them. Don't make them as expensive as they are. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Now, some of the things that are kind of moving into the recent debt de um, ceiling debate here is, is Biden appears to have successfully countered um, two major GOP-led efforts in Congress to repeal the student loan forgiveness plan. It would allow nearly 40 million borrowers to receive somewhere between 10 and 20 grand. Um, this is, depending on how you sit on the fence there, the point I'm trying to make is, is two, two folds. One, it's not a full fix. You know, a lot of students have more debt than that. Um, it obviously kind of punishes the people that paid their own loans off. So that's kind of, you know, negative economics, if you will. 
But the other thing I wanted to really point out here is, is how precarious the United States sits financially and why you need to consider having a really good uh, professional team working with you uh, to consider things you may not consider. Like, you know, I mentioned international. I know we've talked with, you know, Rob with Gold and Silver Pros a lot about adding Gold and Silver's diversification because the United States has some issues. Here's a chart that we'll link to the video from September 30th, 2022. It shows total liabilities for the United States is $40 trillion. Total assets is less than $5 trillion. Now, if I was a banker lending to a corporation that had 40 times the, you know, 40 whatever, billion, million, whatever, in this case it's trillion, and liabilities, and less than 10% of that in assets, I would not consider that to be a great credit risk. No, not at all. The problem is, 45% of the federal government's total federal assets are student loans. So first off, the solvency of our country is dependent upon our youth paying their student loans back. That's kind of scary enough. Yeah. Secondly, if you forgive a large chunk of student loans, you're eliminating an asset of the United States, making our balance sheet go even worse. That means they're, we're gonna have to offer uh, their treasury bills and notes at a higher interest rate, which increases inflation. So it's not a simple fix just to say, hey, let's forgive student loans. It's, it's not a solution to the long-term problem. I think there are other solutions that maybe you can speak on. So from my personal experience, a lot of people don't know about grants and grants are a huge deal. There's a lot of companies that will give you grants that will sponsor you, especially based off your heritage, ethnicity, gender, all of those things can qualify you for money or scholarships for college. So one solution is grants. The second one I would offer is it's pretty common now to start taking college courses, um, get your associate's degree in high school, and that helps eliminate almost two to three years of potential student debt. And it also gets you ahead of the game. You're gonna graduate early, you may have more money stowed away because you graduated without any debt or if any at all. And those are some solutions that aren't really talked about enough. And the third one I would give you is save. You need to learn how to budget your money, how to prepare, especially for things that you aren't going to see coming, like let's say your car breaks down, but you have student loans. Well, you need to have money stored away to fix those things. So budgeting would be a big one, especially if you have scholarships coming your way. You can stow, stow away some money so that um, you can afford those like life disruptions. And I would also add to that, like consider the total cost of college. Like at the end of the day, I've employed a lot of people and I've never made an employment decision based on where somebody graduated. I have based on their degree, maybe their GPA. A lot of times I do look at their work experience. Have they ever interned somewhere? I wanna see, you know, have they engaged in, in their field of potential interest? But for a lot of cases, a degree is a degree. Yeah. I remember one of my first corporate jobs, pretty much my only corporate job, I've been an entrepreneur my whole career, was at Morgan Stanley. And our branch manager had an art degree running a major branch of an investment banking brokerage company. Like he didn't have finance or economics, you know? So consider the school you go to. I know I personally chose the school that was, it was a small school. It gave me the highest scholarship. I was a long range thinker, didn't want to have a lot of debt. So can I think the point I'm trying to make is watch your spending because as we've made some facts and some bullet points in this video, that long range debt could definitely stay with you for a while. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. We've kind of presented two sides to the equation on um, pros and cons of the student loan forgiveness, made some concerns about higher rising interest rates. I'm not sure any one of these is like a perfect solution. So we certainly would like to have your comments and weigh-ins on what you think can be done to kind of mitigate the cost of higher education for tomorrow's youth. Yes, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a pleasure being on this channel. I hope I get to see you guys next time. All right, y'all take care.